Let's talk about the Decimator. This is a product here. It's available for $100 list price. Whew, that is, um, you know, a lot. And I've seen it fairly often and I thought, I'm not sure. I'm sure the, that other programs can do decimation better than the script could do it. And so hence I held off buying it for quite a while. And it turns out after Jeremy told me, hey, um, it is actually much cooler than you think. He showed me some screenshots of the installation that he has going. Thank you, Jeremy, for that. I appreciate that. And then I understood, hey, this thing is actually much cooler than just getting rid of Polygon. So this is not the only thing that Decimator does. And I want to show you how it works because this is one of those tools that you think, man, I had no idea it was going to be that good. And it's literally if you're staying inside that studio. Uh, so let me show you how it works. It's a very short thing. Once you've installed it, it's like 200 kilobytes or something. And once it's in there, I'll go and bring in my uh, modesty texture clothed Genesis 8 figure. Darrell and I have been working on a product that gives you stream safe textures and hopefully this is going to be available to purchase very soon. I'm working on making that happen. It's essentially the Genesis 8 base figure, but she's not naked and therefore I can use her on YouTube, which is awesome. Exactly what I want. So this is my, this is a regular Genesis 8 figure. And let's have a quick look at the wire texture shaded view just to see the amount of polygons that are on there. So wire texture shaded shows you, if I zoom in here, not only the base, whoops, sorry, <laughs> the base geometry, that's this one here. That's the kind of the larger, the thicker squares. It also shows you the applied subdivision surface modifier, about which I've talked extensively in a previous video. So these little thin gray lines here, that's the implied subdivision surface modifier. So if I go over to the parameters tab and go on the mesh resolution, I have these two options here. I've got base and I've got high resolution. And if I switch this to base, you can see that the subdivision surface modifier is kind of disabled and I only am left with the squares here. And this is a really handy thing to do, to switch to base resolution while you're doing something that is intense. So anything from posing characters, animating characters specifically, if you're changing several dials on the character, like the pose architect is a great example. Maybe I can show you the, the effect here. Under parameters, under pose controls, and uh, pose architect. So if I go and say, I don't know, say the natural uh, pose, might as well change to this thing. If I go and uh, move this, you can see that my computer is kind of struggling a little bit because there's a lot of polygons that are being shifted around. It's not, it's not moving smooth at all. And this is in base resolution. So if I go and uh, change this back to my, uh, to my, High resolution is going to be even worse when I do that. So it's it's uh, depending on if you have clothing on the on the character and if you have all kinds of other things on the character. Uh, it's the polygon count and the calculations that need to be applied on the polygons that really is sometimes killing the system. And this is where decimator can really come in handy. So I've got it tagged and uh, tapped here on the right hand side it's a small tab you get it by heading over to window panes and you get your decimator once it's installed you get that out and the way this works is on the selected object which is my genesis figure on the selected object i can go and click this button which is, says prepare to decimate and that's quite cool if i do that then it takes a second and all of a sudden uh, polygons are changing in my figure Granted, they, this, this calculation could probably be done better, but look at all the options that I have now. I can create, I can do something with my resolution. I can either drag that down. 100% means the base resolution is now uh, being used for, the, for this calculation. If I drag this down to say 50%, then I can see that my polygons here update on the fly, reducing my character down until, you know, she becomes uh, almost unnoticeably uh, creepy. So it's, you know, it goes into this walking zombie territory. But of course, look at the polygons. There's so, there's so much less for my computer to move around now. 
So if I do that to something like maybe 20% or so, then I can go and move my sliders here a lot faster. And if you have a lot of clothing on your character or you have hair and stuff, and there's just a lot of stuff your computer needs to calculate, especially on older laptops, um, then, you know, that's, that's just a wonderful way to do that. And the way this works is it doesn't actually ruin your geometry full stop. It all it does, and this is why I find this is such a beautiful way, how the way it's implemented, under your mesh resolution, it just now goes and gives you another level of another resolution level and basically a level of detail so that is how it works it's kind of nice i can still go and switch back to my high resolution if i wanted to and then all my high-res polygons come back or i can switch to base resolution or i can switch to my decimator working resolution and this is kind of nice so you can dial this in, then pose your characters, animate your characters, see a very fluid preview, and then once you're happy to render, you just go and switch this over and back into the into the high resolution. So I thought that was the missing piece of information that I didn't have. That's kind of nice. You can also export the character at this resolution. So much like exporting a character at base resolution, if you just switch it to decimator working, then it'll be whatever resolution is dialed in here. That's kind of cool. Um, but you can you can do other things. So uh, there's the first of all. Let me just go back to these options here. If you if you you can dial in a particular resolution percentage. So if you say I want my my character to be 50% of the resolution that it currently has, you can type that in. Or if you say I would like my character to be, I don't know exactly 5,000 polygons. Or maybe your game engine or your project has something that says I mustn't exceed X amount of polygons for the main character. You can type that in here. So I can say 5,000. Uh, polygons resolution level and if you do that then it just works out whatever that is and then adjusts the polygons automatically so that is very very cool very nice you can also anything that's parented to the character like clothing is also automatically adjusted there's also weights that will be adjusted along with it that's also quite nice you can also add your own levels of detail to the resolution level menu so currently this says decimator working i can also go and say uh, if i say create lod then I'd say with with say with 20 percent I'll, I'll put this to 20 percent it doesn't make it look quite as terrible if i say create lod it says what do you want to call that perhaps lod 687 isn't exactly something that i can remember so i'll go and say this is now 50 percent resolution and when I do that, I get this extra option here. So now it doesn't say decimator working anymore. It says 50%. So this is now locked in. I can go back to base still, and I can go back to high res if I wanted to do that. But I can now also go to 50% resolution. So that lets me make several levels of detail. If I needed three or four for my game project, then I can do that quite exciting i don't know how this works with unreal engine but it's kind of an interesting thing to figure it out i wonder if it's uh, if when i use the send to unreal engine if that is actually gonna if that's gonna take that into consideration i wonder yeah, it's hundred dollars, but you frequently get this at you know fifty to eighty percent off. So pop it on your wish list and the back burner, and you know just uh, keep it around. The at least you now know what it does. So this is something that I never. Um, thought i didn't know this the plugin would work that way i had always assumed well it'll reduce my polygons but what's how is that going to help me inside that studio if i'm doing an animation or whatever this is how it helps so it leaves the rigging and the surfaces and all the weight maps intact while you work on something so it can provide you with a much more fluid viewport experience so especially animators uh, will be able to benefit from that so it's one of those things I, I had a client jeff it's it's a shame i didn't know this at the time otherwise i would have recommended you buy this Jeff uh, he was um, animating several characters in a race walk animation looked very very good he will share this at one point and he's a race walking judge and he is he wanted to make training sessions and hence he wanted to build an interactive scene with several race walkers who then cross the finish line and um, show to his students uh, who who take the course show to his students well this is what you're going to have to look at and he wanted to use das figures to make that happen and one of the things i remember we were talking about is that even at base resolution uh, several characters they are very difficult to move so if you drop them down in resolution that would have greatly helped so you know i hope you can make use of this if you're watching jeff awesome to see that final product by the way very good very good 